Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our COVID-19 update for January 4th of 2021. It is a new year. Happy New Year to all. I hope you had a good celebration, though quiet one with your immediate family. Uh, once again, I'm joined by Kendra Schmidt from Deaf Access Services, will be providing the American Sign Language, and Dr. Gail Burstein, who will be hearing from shortly. I want to first move right into an update on our numbers. Uh, as of January 2nd, there are 42,731 confirmed COVID-19 cases since the beginning of the pandemic in Erie County. Uh, we did see an increase in the cases last week. We'll talk a little bit about that. The positivity rate went up. Uh, the seven-day positivity rate as of uh, January 2nd, the week ending January 2nd, was 7%. Uh, there were 1,199 confirmed deceased as of December 29th. We should receive a data set tomorrow, uh, which will go through the remainder of December 31st, so we will be able to confirm the exact total of individuals who died in 2020 from uh, COVID-19. We know this number will go up because there were additional deaths in hospitals and nursing homes on the 30th and 31st, uh, but we'll have better data set tomorrow. On January 2nd, there were 509 COVID-19 patients in Western New York hospitals, 86 in the ICU. 407 patients were in Erie County hospitals. That number has dropped a little bit. Uh, 74 in the ICU, 53 were on an airway assist. Unfortunately, 10 died on January 2nd in the hospital and 35% of all patients were age 64 and under. Uh, diagnostic testing summary, as we noted, we did see an increase in cases week to week from uh, the week that ended December 26th of 2020 to the week that ended January 2nd, 2021. Uh, the amount of tests were almost identical. It was only off by a couple hundred, uh, but the confirmed cases rose uh, from 3,076 for the week that ended December 26th to 3,470 to the week that ended January 2nd. Our positivity rate did increase from 6.2% to 7.0%. It was a 13% increase in new cases. We believe that this is part of a post-holiday season surge. Uh, we haven't seen a huge surge, which is a good thing, but we do ha and have seen cases Dr. Burstein will talk a little bit more about that later with regards to contact tracing, which we believe are directly attributable to individuals meeting during the Christmas holiday with individuals outside their families at small gatherings. Uh, the COVID cases by zip code for the week ending January 2nd, these are raw numbers. The number one zip code was the town of Tonawanda zip code at 14150, with also a very high daily percentage I should say a percentage of cases of 100,000 population on a seven day rolling average of 84.3. The next highest was Amherst Williamsville Clarence, 14221, but you can see its daily percentage of cases on a seven day rolling average for 100,000 population was less at 56. The next highest was Lancaster, then Cheektowaga, then West Seneca, one Hamburg. Uh, these zip codes we've basically been talking about for two months now between Lancaster, Hamburg, West Seneca, and Tonawanda, uh, and cheek parts of Cheektowaga as being the sort of worst offenders. It's not good, but we continue to see it. I am glad to see in the Hamburg zip code that its daily cases per 100,000 population has dropped below 50. That is a good sign, uh, but we're still seeing the raw numbers coming from these areas, and the full list will be available for media uh, posted on our social media this afternoon, so you can take a look at it by every zip code uh, in Erie County from the largest to the smallest number of cases and then broken down uh, based on a percentage of the 100,000 population on our, on our rolling average. Uh, Erie County hospitalizations, we did talk about this. This is the two week chart. Uh, we did see it increase at the end of December uh, to 439 being the highest that we'd had in quite some time. It's not the highest. We had a higher total at the beginning of December, uh, but we have seen thankfully some drops in the last two days of hospitalization data. 68.7% uh, of all Erie County hospital beds are occupied. Uh, approximately 40% of all ICU beds are available. So only about 60% of ICU beds uh, are being occupied at, at this moment. 18% uh, of the COVID hospitalizations though are in an ICU bed. That's pretty static to what we've seen lately in that 20% category. And uh, ICU and airway assist numbers have remained steady over the last two weeks, uh, even though the number of deaths we've had in the last week's recorded data has been high. You can look at that bottom line 
uh, they're rustish, rust color, so to speak. And you'll see that we've had a lot of deaths in the hospital over the last week. Uh, and that is a very discouraging sign. And once again, I certainly offer my deepest condolences on behalf of our Erie County family and myself to the loved ones who've lost one uh, from COVID-19, whether it was the first case earlier this year or the most recent one. Too many uh, people have been taken from us, uh, individuals who were leading their best lives. And uh, it is sad that we've lost so many people in our community in basically less than a year. Uh, response. I want to talk a lot about uh, a few things, but first I have to note uh, that this weekend uh, someone or a number of people uh, created social media accounts impersonating Commissioner Gail Burstein from the Department of Health as well as our Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Dan Neverth Jr. Uh, this is dangerous and it's irresponsible for these actors to do this, to create these fake accounts and then put out misleading information, false information. When these accounts were first created, they didn't look like they were a parody account. There was a slight misspelling in each of their names. Uh, but for most people, they would not realize it because there's a picture of Dr. Gale smiling, Dr. Gale at a press conference, and then posting things which were false and truthfully could be dangerous, such as stating that both her and myself had received the vaccine, which is was completely false. Neither of us have received a dose of the vaccine yet. And we're not gonna get it until our applicable groups are allowed to get it. And there were other things that were posted that were false. I wanna remind everybody, you need to follow real accounts. I'm not gonna name these accounts because I don't want people going to these accounts. Dr. Burstein does not have a Twitter account. The Erie County Department of Health has a Twitter account at ECDOH. Those are the official statements that are coming from the Department of Health and Dr. Burstein. Commissioner Neverth has a personal account, but the official account for the Erie County Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services on Twitter is Erie County ESU. So if you see something that purports to be the Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Dan Neverth, his Twitter page, it's not, it's a fake. We've asked for Twitter to take these down. This is dangerous. False information could be shared with the public, information that is incongruent with what we've been saying for months now. And the person who's doing it, you think it's funny? It's not funny. We're trying to subpoena from Twitter who did it, and if we find out, we're gonna lodge charges against impersonation. It's as simple as that. Now on a better topic, vaccine delivery to Western New York and Erie County. Uh, the governor talked about a number of things earlier today with regards to vaccine delivery. New York State is expediting nursing home vaccinations this week to supplement the federal efforts. Erie County government, nor the New York State has been involved at all so far in the vaccination efforts associated with nursing homes in our region. On the first day of vaccinations, we received a report noting which nursing homes were vaccinated in Erie County. That was over two weeks ago. We have not received a report from the federal government or the state since then. It's very disappointing. We do not know what nursing homes have been vaccinated in Erie County, or for that matter, the rest of Western New York, despite repeated efforts to get that information. And it's, it's really sad because we get calls from people saying, when is our nursing home gonna get vaccinated? We don't even know which nursing homes have been vaccinated. The federal government needs to release that information. If the state has it, they need to release it to us as well. So we know who's been vaccinated and whether staff is getting vaccinated at those locations or not. Now, the Erie County, our government, is working with the Western New York Regional Hub on vaccination efforts. For example, today, earlier today, I visited the first point of dispensing clinic that Erie County was allowed to provide to healthcare professionals. We couldn't do it until we had New York State approval and vaccines delivered. Well, today and tomorrow, approximately 1,500 healthcare professionals will receive their first dose of the Moderna vaccine at our point of distribution clinic in Erie County. All appointments for this point of dispersing clinic are full. There's no more room at this clinic. I was there earlier today. You can actually see pictures on the screen from the clinic, as well as our staff that is taking the actual vials. And this is an actual former vial of vaccine, the Moderna vaccine. It has been completely drained of vaccine, but they gave it to me as a souvenir of visiting. 
Uh, but this is the Moderna vaccine. I'll put it right here. And uh, it is right now being dispensed by Erie County Department of Health Public, uh, health nurses, as well as other staff. We are expecting 1,500 healthcare professionals to go through our doors today and tomorrow. And we are also expecting the receipt of 7,500 more doses later this week to offer vaccination to others in the 1A group that have not yet been vaccinated uh, through whether it's a hospital or not. These doses did not come directly to Erie County. We actually worked with our local hub, and I want to thank the partners on our local hub to do it, to take extra doses that were received by Roswell Park and use it so that we could vaccinate hundreds of individuals in a day. We will get approximately 1,500 done over a two-day period, and if things go well, we'll have those additional 7,500 uh, more doses, and we'll be able to not only activate the current pod site, but two more so we can continue to vaccinate individuals in our community with their first dose. Remember, you need two doses. So this is the first dose for many of these individuals. I talked to a lot of folks. They were very pleased to be given the opportunity to receive their dose. And I want to thank each and every one of those individuals out there who is getting out there and vac getting vaccine, those healthcare professionals. They understand the need for it. They're getting vaccinated. And I want to thank those who showed up today and those who received the vaccine previously, because that's the only way we're going to get out of this is if we vaccinate individuals in our community, all of us. Now, today the governor also talked about how they need to do a better job of getting vaccines out from hospitals to their staff and others. And he called on county executives to ensure that those counties that have a public hospital, that the doses are being used. Now, ECMC is no longer a Department of Erie County Government. It's a public health corporation, public benefit corporation, which is actually an arm of the state. It was spun off during the Giambra years. But that has not stopped us from doing the work to ensure that our hospitals are delivering the vaccine in our community. Weekly, I have calls with the hospital executives, including the CEOs, to determine where they are in hospitalization, where they are with regards to vaccine delivery. It is a conversation we constantly have and will continue to have. Now, the governor did note, and I'm proud to say that, that ECMC was in the top 10 for delivering vaccines among all hospitals in New York State compared to others, which are very poor. He noted that 62% of the doses that had been received by ECMC had been vaccinated individuals, as he said, put in their arms. Well, I've confirmed with Tom Quattrochi, the president and CEO of ECMC today, that as of this morning, 72% of those doses had been administered. And Mr. Quattrochi expects that as long as the state approval comes for all future doses that are pending, that they will use all the doses that they've received by the end of this week. Now, ECMC is not just uh, giving doses to its staff. It's also doing it to EMS personnel as part of the 1A group. So I want to commend all those that are out there working very hard to ensure that the doses that are received in our community go in the shoulders of our residents. We don't want them sitting there. That's not what's happening in Erie County. That's why we have a point of distribution clinic going on today. You can actually see that's a picture of me at the pod this, this morning. Our, this afternoon, it was their afternoon, talking with our Department of Health nurses who were administering the, the vaccines. Uh, people were very happy to get the vaccines. No adverse reactions from anybody who was there. It was going very smoothly. If they allow us to do the work, we're going to get our community vaccinated. And why? Because we know how to do it and we've set it up. Just to give you an example, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Burstein now. We've put in place the things that are necessary to ensure that we can vaccinate not just hundreds in a day, but eventually thousands, so that we can be one of the first counties in New York State to vaccinate our population. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Burstein to talk uh, more about vaccines as well as some of the other matters we're dealing with. Thank you. Good afternoon. As, as our county executive alluded to, we are ready to vaccinate and we are vaccinating. However, we can't just vaccinate whoever we want. Uh, the mem vaccine for the general population will not be available until later this year, probably not till the summer. So right now we're vaccinating who New York State has designated to be eligible for vaccine. So that's in the phase 1A category. So this week, in addition to the uh, hospital workers, um, nursing home staff, 
Um, uh, we're also immunizing um, people who are work in healthcare in the community that are not affiliated with the hospital. So that includes doctors, nurses, um, occupational therapists, physical therapists, uh, speech therapists, um, behavioral health workers, people working in laboratories, people working in dialysis centers, I mean, you know, all those people working and who directly interface um, with the public. So that would include the receptionists that are, have direct contact with the public. All those individuals are eligible to be immunized this week. And then starting next week, the list will expand even more, so there'll be home health care workers on the list, um, hospice workers, and skilled nursing facility staff that haven't already been immunized by the pharmacist. But again, vaccine for the general community will not be available for the public and probably until later this spring or the summer. It will be months. So. I know that I'm so excited that everybody wants to get immunized. It's a safe vaccine. It's effective vaccine. We just have to wait a few more months. So um, as well as being able to put shots in arms, we're also able to put vaccine into cold storage. So um, Erie County has an excellent vaccine storage ultra cold freezer capacity. So we have two freezers that are capable of, of storing the minus 80 degree for, min for the Pfizer vaccine. And we have one, right now we have one vac freezer that's capable of, of uh, storing the minus 30 degrees for the Moderna vaccine. And we have three more of those freezers on the way. So um, each of those freezers is capable of holding um, at least 20,000 doses of vaccine at a time. So um, we are ready to receive vaccine and we're also ready to immunize people. Um, so we wanna immunize. Um, so just changing the subject a little bit, talking about contact tracing, and by today, uh, actually today, we have 82 contact tracers working right now. And so I had the opportunity to speak to some of them this morning, and they told me when they're contacting people um, to notify them that they tested positive, they're hearing back that um, people admitting that they attended small holiday gatherings, um, you know, not large holiday gatherings, but they were small holiday gatherings. You know, also people admitted that they had some recent travel. So um, remember, you know, every time you go kind of outside your, your, your own uh, protective zone, your safe zone of your household, you are putting yourself and then other people at risk for COVID-19. So uh, remember, we have to try to you know, keep it safe, um, you know, keep within our household. And if we do go out, you know, try to keep it uh, outside, it's safer than inside. And whatever you do, please wear a mask. And remember, traveling outside of New York State is still dangerous. There's still very high numbers outside of New York State. So Erie County Health Department is uh, still doing, uh, offering COVID-19 testing, as well as many other testing sites. Again, we're seeing, you know, 56, 57,000 uh, tests done every week. So if you wanna get tested at, uh, by an Erie County Health Department uh, site, um, we are testing residents that either have COVID-19 uh, 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 symptoms or um, residents who are uh, close contacts to a COVID-19 case. So um, if you fit either of those categories and you wanna get tested by us, you know, please call 716-858-2929. Remember, um, it is free, you don't, um, there, all you need is an appointment. If you have an appointment, please show up. Um, also, um, you know, our other health problems have, uh, have are, are still persist, unfortunately. We're still seeing a lot of people struggling with, uh, with uh, substance use disorder. And so we are continuing our efforts to, uh, to try to beat our opioid overdose epidemic. So um, what we're seeing, what we're doing right now is continuing to do Narcan trainings. Uh, in COVID-19, we're doing all these virtually online. So um, we are launching a new effort of, of virtual online COVID-19 Narcan trainings. So they're gonna be offered at all different types of times of the day, morning, midday, um, evenings. Um, and each participant of these trainings will receive a free Narcan kit. So if you wanna register, just go to our website, erie.gov slash opioid trainings and register. Um, remember, this problem has not gone, gone away. Way. I know we talk about COVID-19, COVID-19, however, we still are struggling. Many people are still struggling with um, opioid use disorder and we're still seeing op opioid overdoses. So with that, I will turn it over to the county executive to answer questions.
Thank you, Dr. Burstein. As we noted, we're working very hard. <laughs> May have been a holiday weekend, but a lot of us were still doing work. Uh, I was in early yesterday morning, we were answering phones, dealing with issues over the weekend, as well as Dr. Burstein, to ensure that we could get our point of dispensing clinic up and running as planned, and I'm glad it's there. Our staff is working very hard to vaccinate the members of the healthcare community, just like other members of the healthcare community are doing it. Uh, we want everyone to understand that uh, once we're given the go-ahead to do more, we're going to do more. Uh, the state is controlling a lot of the aspects associated with the vaccine delivery. But we're ready to do more. Uh, the clinic was going very well today. We we're averaging about, uh, about 65, 67 people per hour coming in and out. Uh, remember, once you get vaccinated, you can't just walk right out. You have to wait for 15 minutes or so to see if there's an adverse reaction. We didn't get any individuals that had an adverse reaction, but it was going very well. And I want to thank our Department of Health staff for the work that they did today and are going to do the remainder of today and tomorrow to vaccinate members of our healthcare community. And I want to thank our partners in the Western New York Regional Vaccination Hub for allowing us this opportunity to prove that Erie County is not only ready to vaccinate our public, we are doing it. With that, I'll open it up to questions from members of the media. We will start first. Is anybody on from uh, WKBW Channel 7? If not, I believe George Rickert from Channel 4 is on. Hello, Mark. Um, yesterday there was a protest of hockey players and enthusiasts. Is there any hope or um, perspective you can offer them on whether anything might change anytime soon? Right now they can practice, but they can't play. What's the latest on any hope for hockey families? Uh, they can practice. They can drill. There are certain things they can do in, among their internal team. Uh, it is New York State that has made a statewide decision associated with this. We have talked to New York State. I have not heard anything different. Uh, it's just like with the cluster zones. I've advocated for the orange zone to return to a yellow zone. I think we had a shot at that until our numbers went up for the last week. Uh, so maybe we're going to have to wait a few more days for the orange zone to go to a yellow zone. I was hopeful after having three straight weeks of declining numbers that the state would do that. Uh, it didn't happen yet, and I think it's because of the numbers going up. So let's see what happens with regards to this uh, Christmas surge, so to speak. Uh, and if we can get through the next week or so, I think we'll be better on the local front. But when it comes to all the sports, those are uh, determinations that are made on a state level. We have seen some cases, as we've noted in the past, of COVID-19 transmission on teams. Uh, we're not seeing it with every team, but we have seen it in particular locations in the past. And our hope is that uh, we can eliminate that so we can allow these teams uh, to at least play amongst the region. I mean, I, I, I understand that there's a former hockey coach why it matters. I think I, yeah, I actually do. I have my Hockey Fights Cancer uh, tie on today. Uh, some of my friends are going to be playing in the 11 day power play, and we want to support them as well as they raise money for Roswell Park. Uh, the 11 day power play is in November of this year. But uh, it's really in the state's hands. I'm hopeful they'll move forward with it, George. Uh, Channel 2, WGRZ TV, is anyone on? Hi, this is Claudine. Hi, Claudine. Um, quick question. Hi. Regarding the vaccinations, one of the things the governor talked about today were um, pop-up vaccination centers. Do we know about that coming to Western New York? Uh, well, when it comes to the general public, it's going to be months away, uh, Claudine. And I think the governor was referencing more for the general public. Uh, the, the clinic we have today is technically a pop-up clinic because it is not located in an Erie County uh, setting. It, it is, uh, we're using a, a third party's location. I don't want to disclose it because I'm afraid people will show up thinking they can get vaccinated when this is a closed clinic. It was by appointment only and the appointments are full. But uh, we are doing pop-up clinics already, so to speak. But when it comes to the general public, unfortunately, it's still going to be months away. But it's part of the plan that we have. We are going to have pop-up clinics in Erie County because we've already planned for it. We have multiple mobile units, including one very large one you'll be learning a lot more about in the, in the next week or so, uh, which we just received, which allows us to do mobile clinics across the entire county, uh, including having individuals come in. There will be clinical rooms, at least two clinical rooms in this mobile clinic that can be utilized at any one time. So you're going to see mobile clinics in the county when we do deal with the general public. It's just going to be months away. And just a quick follow-up, um, if maybe Dr. Burstein can answer this, just so people are very clear, who is next in line to get the vaccine? Uh, well, I'll go back just to show you. 
we are still in the 1A category. We've had a lot of requests regarding school teachers and seniors. They're down the line. The 1A category is all health care is what we're talking about. And effective today, the governor announced that doctors, nurses, and health care staff who come in contact with the public may be vaccinated. So starting this week, they can start registering through the site that exists that is shared with the medical profession. Beginning next week, home health care workers, hospice workers, staff of skilled nursing homes that have not already received the vaccine will, will be eligible for the vaccine because not every individual in a nursing home may have gotten the, the vaccine just yet. Uh, and we know that according to what the governor announced earlier, only about 40% of nursing homes have actually received the vaccine. So uh, for now, we want to continue to remind everybody, the general public is months away. And it, for, for this moment right now, we are still in the 1A category. And it's my understanding there's a 1B and there'll be a 1C before we even get to 2. And those are related primarily to the most at-risk populations. Uh, I'm hopeful that by the end of January, we were talking about being able to uh, vaccinate those seniors that are most at risk because they're over the age of 75. But right now we do not have a definitive timeline on that. Nevertheless, members of the general public. Does that work, doctor? She gave me the thumbs up. Uh, Aaron Ty from Spectrum News. Are you there? Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, knowing that this is gonna take months, um, but we got off to a little bit of a slow start. Uh, with the vaccine distribution, when can we expect to get back to normal? Do you guys have an estimation on that? Well, uh, I really would just be making a super hypothetical, but as was noted last week by the president-elect, if we do not change the rate of vaccinations in our company, our country, it's probably going to be another year at least. Uh, and I don't know what back to normal actually is going to be. I don't know what it means. I think you're still going to see a lot of people wearing masks. One thing we have seen with the increase in mask usage is a drop in other illnesses like the flu. We really haven't had much flu to talk about in this region. Uh, so I don't know what back to normal exactly is going to be. Uh, but uh, if you're talking about mass vaccinations of the greater public and then developing herd immunity, I mean, you're talking not just about months, but potentially a year or more. So we're all hopeful that uh, we can get through this as quickly as possible. We're very, very worried about the variant of COVID-19 that you're seeing in, uh, in Great Britain, as well as now another variant that appears to have come from South Africa that are much more highly infectious. If not, they don't kill any more percentage, but they're much more infectious. So we're very worried about that coming in here. That's why we wanna vaccinate as many of the at-risk people in our community as quickly as possible. Because if we do get the variant, Individuals are in unlikely are likely going to get sick. They're going to go to hospitals, which put at risk the hospital population and others. So our goal is to vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible. Uh, the state controls the vaccine distribution. The state controls when you're going to hold a pod or not. Uh, so it's really in the state's hands is when we can move forward with more vaccines. But we're ready, as we're saying. We're willing, we're able, and we're doing it right now. We would just like to be able to do more people as quickly as possible to get us through this period uh, before especially that variant hits. Uh, the Buffalo News, uh, Sandy Tan and Steve Watson. Welcome back, Sandy, after your vacation. That was this past week in which we were officially authorized to get the vaccine and set up the pod. Uh, and then it wasn't until yesterday evening, early evening, our staff was working through the bills game because the uh, vaccine doses did not get delivered to Erie County's hands until yesterday. So uh, we were waiting for state approval. We finally got it at the end of last week and we were able to set up the, uh, the pod clinics for today and tomorrow. They're booked, every appointment's full uh, and uh, we're ready and willing to do much more. As you said, we have the freezers. We have uh, two freezers to handle the minus 80, which is the Pfizer vaccine. We have one freezer on hand that can handle the Moderna vaccine, vaccine which three more freezers coming very soon. I think they're coming by the end of this week. Uh, so we're ready and willing and able. We're just, we're waiting for the state to give us approval and they did. And then on the first question, I'm hopeful that the, what you're seeing is the worst of it. Our numbers have kind of fluctuated over the last few days. We've had some good days, some not so great days, but nothing terrible. Certainly not as bad as what we've seen in 
not just other parts of uh, western New York, but uh, the Finger Lakes region is some really high numbers lately. So we're nowhere near that. It's one of the reasons why I advocated the state. I think we could go back to the yellow zone, which would allow indoor dining and restaurants of up to four people. Uh, I'm hopeful that we do not get any worse. Uh, if we do, then we will have handled the, the holidays very well. I'll let Dr. Burstein also continue because uh, I do know that we are getting reports from our contact tracers that the individuals who have tested positive in the last few days uh, are individuals who did gather with others during the holidays. So we are starting to see the mini Christmas surge now, and I'm fairly confident we'll start to see issues associated with the New Year's Eve surge uh, by the end of this week because uh, those numbers will start to come in, but uh, hopefully this is as bad as it gets, and if so, uh, We've done a pretty good job as a region of being able to control uh, the further spread of coronavirus compared to other parts of New York State, and especially the country, which some areas are just horrible. Dr. Burstein. Sure, thank you. Thanks. So, you know, as we've said uh, many times, our, our case numbers and our hospitalizations are really dependent on our behavior. And so uh, people who have uh, been recently diagnosed with COVID-19 that are contacted by our nurses, just to confirm that they're aware of their diagnosis and they're aware they need to be in isolation, they're reporting that you know they did get together with family and friends for the holidays, and they um, although they weren't huge gatherings, um, they were still you know gatherings, you know family gatherings with people that they don't live with or um, with people that they don't normally see. You know also people did go out and travel. Um, people you know I know people that went to Florida. I I don't want to go near them, um, but they um, they you know I know people went to Florida or other warmer climates like they always do. And we also know that um, those states have very, very high rates. And so when they return, um, we know that they're at risk of developing COVID-19 um, more so than the general population just because they've been in a place with a lot of COVID-19. So um, just remember, our numbers, our COVID cases and our hospitalizations are directly dependent on our behavior. So we have to keep it safe and, uh, you know, and, um, you know, further, hopefully the bills will continue doing well and we'll be able to continue watching the games. But we just have to remember just to, to keep it um, small size, um, just, you know, stay with people and your family. If you do want to go out with friends or family, you know, try to keep it outdoors and try to keep your masks on as much as possible. Thanks. Okay, a WBFO. Anybody on from WBFO? If not, WBEN. Hi, Mark. Uh, the testing infrastructure we notice is going up uh, outside of the Bill Stadium for the game that's upcoming. Uh, my question for you is I'm just wondering if the county is planning to utilize that site for future purposes like vaccination clinics that you had been talking about earlier. Uh, well, first off, the, <clears throat> the site is not being done by the county. It's being done by bioreference as paid for, to my understanding, by the bills. I don't know what the long-term uh, use of the facility is. Uh, we wouldn't mind using it in the future, uh, but there are also potential if the bills win this game, which we think they will, they'll beat the Colts, uh, then uh, they'll have a, another game the following week, we know at home. So they would, they would then have to test again uh, for individuals if the state allows them to uh, once again have fans in the stadium. I don't know the long-term uh, future of that site. Uh, it does appear that it could, because of the way the facility is, is being built, it could be used for uh, many other purposes in the future, not just testing, potentially vaccine delivery. Uh, but it's a little different vaccine delivery than testing because this is a drive-through site. And right now, because of the requirement that people wait 15 minutes afterwards, after they get the vaccine dose, it's tough to do that with a drive through site because then you have to move vehicles to another spot and know exactly who they are before you can release them. Uh, so I'm going to uh, kind of put it in the hands of others at this point. It's not a county facility. We don't control it. If it gets immediately taken down, uh, once the Bills win the Super Bowl, then so be it. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, I know it's got a purpose and they're going to be using it this week. Uh, so there's no, no way that the county could get in there. Just a quick follow-up to that. The, the county owns the stadium and leases out to the bills. It doesn't own the parking lots? We own the parking lots, but we don't have rights to use the, 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 the 
tent facilities and the like uh, like that. We lease the facilities out to the beer, uh, to the bills, the whole facility, not just the stadium. When we have a lease, it's for the whole facility. So the bills have a right to use the parking lot any way they so choose. Uh, now, that's not to say they don't allow us to use it for other things. Earlier this year, we did a distribution to uh, barbers and beauty shops of face masks as well as uh, uh, sanitizer uh, in one of the lots across the street from the stadium. Uh, but we lease it, which means we actually, while we own it, we don't control it during that period. So we can't tell the bills, oh, that is ours from now on. Uh, we can work with them, and I would hope that we'd have an opportunity to work with them. But we know for now, for the time being, it's going to be utilized to test individuals who are entering the stadium. And if the state allows them to, uh, to hold another uh, game with fans after the Bills beat the Colts, then it's going to be used the following week once again to test individuals. So uh, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be in use. Afterwards, I'm always willing to talk. Uh, any other members of the media that I did not, I did not get an opportunity to ask a question? I'm sorry. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Mark, uh, Steve Watson, Buffalo News. Uh, why don't we go to whoever else it was, because I'll come back to you, Steve. Who else was it? Okay. I'm sorry. This is Hannah Bueller with Channel 7. I couldn't get my mic on quick enough the first time around. I was wondering if Dr. Burstein could just comment about the different doses of vaccine and how that exactly works. I know that there is a specific period of time until you get the second vaccine. Does that mean that you are you know, able to contract the virus during that time? Do you need both doses to be, you know, completely okay? I mean, can you, can you kind of break that down a little bit? Sure. So there are currently the FDA has authorized uh, two uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use in the United States. So as you mentioned, the Moderna and the Pfizer. So the Moderna is, um, is approved for people who are 18 years and older. And um, that is dosed um, for uh, the first, you, for the second, it's a two, do both are two doses. And for the Moderna, the second dose is uh, 28 days after the first dose. Uh, for the Pfizer, that is approved for use for people who are 16 years and older. And the second dose, is uh, supposed to be scheduled for 21 days after the first dose. Um, so we know it takes a couple weeks to get any type of, uh, um, some type of immune response, immune protection um, after every dose. And we know that after the first dose, um, you know, there's, we think there's about a 50% protection. Um, and after the second dose, we believe there's about 95% protection. So, um, you know, people can get infected uh, after their first dose while they're waiting for their second dose. Um, first of all, because, you know, it does take a while, to, a couple weeks to uh, develop any type of um, immune response to the vaccine. And, and then also, um, if you only had one dose, it's only a partial protection. So um, even after someone receives the second dose, like the day after somebody receives their second dose of vaccine, they're still uh, at risk of infection because it still takes about a couple weeks after the second dose to get to that 95% protection. So did I answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Sure. Okay, Steve Watson. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, two questions here. One, and uh, uh, Dr. Bernstein did address this a little bit, how concerned are you about fans getting together with all the excitement around the Bills and the playoff game, getting together for watch parties, you know, at their homes, trying to tailgate? And then secondly, what conversations have you been having with the state about Erie County's orange zone and the possibility for lifting uh, those restrictions? Uh, well, the first question, we are very concerned about people gathering. As the governor noted, and as I noted last week, if there are people tailgating around the stadium, it's probably going to result in the state not allowing individual fans to attend the, the second game after we beat the Colts. I'm thinking positive. Uh, so we're telling folks, don't blow it for others. And having uh, talked to a few individuals that I know that are season ticket holders, a couple who are, have tickets to the game, for the record, I am not going to the game. Uh, they don't want to have it blown because 
some idiot wants to get trashed in an ancillary lot partying with others. Uh, have fun. Watch the game. Do it at home like we've done all year. We've had good luck with it. Bills are on one heck of a roll, so why don't we continue doing that? And uh, we are worried because that could create a spike in our numbers, and a spike in our numbers is what we're trying to avoid. So if we continue what we've been doing, avoiding these larger social gatherings, uh, I think we'll be okay. If people want to party, if they want to tailgate and say it's my constitutional right to tailgate, well, I hate to tell you, as someone who went to law school and practiced law, there is no right in the Constitution to tailgate. <laughs> uh, you have a free, uh, right of uh, free expression in the First Amendment and other things, but I, I know the Constitution pretty, pretty well, and I don't see a right to tailgate in there. And if you tailgate, uh, you're only putting at risk future games for people to be at. And the last thing we want when we finally get fans in the stadium, and if they can do it safely, is to say no because some people are out there tailgating and getting drunk and ruining it for everyone else. Now, with regards to the orange zone cluster uh, discussion, I've had conversations with the state's uh, highest levels of the state. Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I have talked about it. We were hopeful that we would actually see the orange zone go to a yellow today. Uh, but it was also dependent on our most recent numbers, and unfortunately for the last week, our numbers went up with regards to new cases, and our percentage went up to 7.0 over a weekly average. I was hoping it would go down and we could get into the yellow zone. I'm still hoping that'll be the case, but we need our numbers to go down. Our hospitalizations had a little bit of a spike. Now they're going down again. Let's keep it on that trend. If we can keep the hospitalizations going down and we can keep the numbers of new cases going down, including the positivity rate, we'll be in a much better position to go from an orange to yellow or to lift the orange in a good portion of the region and maybe keep it in certain areas. Uh, I'm hopeful we can go back to a yellow. I do think it's unfair that Erie County uh, has a lower percentage of people testing positive uh, as well as hospitalizations than some other counties in, in parts of New York State that do not have the cluster zones. Uh, we deserved it at first. I'm not going to deny that. When our numbers were going up and we were highest in the state, there was a reason why we went to the yellow when we went to the orange, because our numbers were high. Uh, we've controlled it, and I'm hoping we can go back down, but it's going to require all of us. It is in our hands to eliminate the possibility of catching coronavirus so our numbers don't keep on going up. Uh, so if we see over the next few days after we get through this Christmas bump, so to speak, that the numbers go down, I'm going to continue to advocate that we at least go back to the yellow zone. Uh, I think it's fair, and uh, it is something that, uh, that based on the statistics, we are not as bad as we were. And there are other parts of New York State that are much worse than we are. And we do not deserve to be penalized if we are doing a better job. So if we continue to go down, we should go back to the yellow. If we don't, it's going to be tough for me to make that argument because it's in everyone else's hands to stop the further spread. Uh, we'll do one more round. Uh, George Ricker, Channel 4, any questions? Yeah, hello, Mark. Uh, regarding firefighters, volunteer firefighters being vaccinated, I know you said you really don't have a good handle on how many of the nursing homes have been vaccinated because you haven't gotten an update from the state. but. Do you have a handle on what percentage of our local volunteer firefighters have been vaccinated and or maybe what the opt-out rate of them has been? I cannot answer those questions, George. We have not gotten that data from the state, even though we've requested it. Uh, I can't even give you a hard number as to how many people have been vaccinated. Based on information I've received from the hospitals, they did as of... Uh, the uh, end of last week, about 13,000 vaccinations. But you're also including individuals who work in a hospital setting and those who may have come in that were EMS or others that were allowed in. Uh, I do not have a number. It, it is, it bothers me. And this, the state officials have heard me say it, that I'd want more data to know who actually has been vaccinated. I don't have it. It is out of our control. We'll know exactly who was vaccinated by the end of today. I, I, we will know exactly everyone who's been vaccinated in a future county point of dispensing clinic. But I do not know how many have been vaccinated in the county in total. I do not know what nursing homes have been vaccinated in total. And I'm not the only one. Every other county leader in New York State is feeling the same way. Uh, and uh, we just hope we get more accurate information as this moves along. Uh, 
WGRZ Channel 2, anyone there? If not, uh, Hannah Bueller, do you have any other questions? Channel 7? Okay, Aaron Ty, Spectrum News, any more questions? Yeah, this one is for Dr. Burstein. Um, just wondering, so we know that children can't get the vaccine at this point. Uh, are there any other like major groups that are, aren't going to qualify for the vaccine um, because of medical conditions or anything else? Sure, thanks. So um, I guess the, the so you're basically asking about the contraindications to the vaccines. So um, anybody who has had an allergic reaction to um, the first dose of vaccine or any of the components should not receive a second dose. Also um, interesting that uh, people who have been infected with COVID-19 um, in the past 90 days should, um, should wait until 90 days after their infection because, and not that it would hurt them, not that we know that it would hurt them to get the vaccine. However, there is a limited supply of vaccine and we know that uh, we have good data to show that people are protected against a, re an, a future COVID-19 infection for at least 90 days after their first infection. So there's good immune, immune protection for 90 days um, after a COVID-19 infection. So you don't need a COVID vaccine because you already have your natural protection. You know, after that, the data are not as clear. So um, the state and CDC are recommending that uh, after 90 days after an infection, then you're, it's okay to get a vaccine. You know, also, as I mentioned earlier, there are age cutoffs for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. Uh, Moderna, it's 18 and up. Pfizer, it's 16 and up. And then also, um, you, know, um, you know, again, people who've had uh, allergic reactions to, um, to, you know, products in the vaccine should, uh, should not get that vaccine. So, um, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, we really want people to get immunized. There are very few contraindications, and we're hoping that as many people get immunized because we know it is an effective vaccine, and we know that these are safe vaccines. So we want people to get immunized to protect themselves and to protect everybody else in our community. Oops. Thank you, uh, Buffalo News, Sandy Tan, Steve Watson. Any more questions? Yes, um, thank you. Regarding um, this lack of information coming from the federal and, and uh, federal government and, and the state, um, that, that does seem really uh, worrisome. I'm wondering regarding nursing home data, does the state, is it your understanding that the state has been given this data, but the counties haven't? Or do the states not even have uh, this data? Um, and I, in general, I'm just interested in what sort of feedback you've gotten from the state regarding your request for information. Um, secondly, I, I know that um, the governor in his call had mentioned wanting um, public facilities like convention centers to be hubs for vaccine distribution. I imagine you've already had some of those conversations. I didn't know if there was anything to, um, to, to discuss on, on, on that front as far as the use of public facilities for distribution. Uh, in regards to the first question I don't I can't answer it Sandy I assume the state has the data the governor did uh, talk about percentages associated with nursing homes that were vaccinated we haven't seen it I'm not the only one who's asked for it uh, so uh, it best to direct it to uh, state officials I wish we had it because I'd like to know what nursing homes in Erie County received it we we got the first day's data uh, and that came from the New York State Association of Health Professionals I believe and I say Joe I wish we had it, we don't. And it is something that I would be helpful to know which nursing homes and where have been, have been vaccinated, at least got the first dose. And remember, we're not talking about even the second dose. Most of them have not even commenced getting to the second dose level. So it was good to hear the governor note that they're going to uh, take a much greater role with regards to vaccinating nursing homes because at the rate they were going, it would have taken months to get through all the nursing homes with both doses. So I'm glad that the state is taking on that responsibility. Uh, and allowing us to do the additional vaccination as necessary. But in regards to the first question, uh, yeah, I, it, it would be better to know it, uh, but I don't. And then the second question is, once again, just refresh me, my memory. I was simply asking about um, the governor's reference to using oh, yeah. convention uh, centers. facilities like convention centers for dis distribution of the vaccine. Uh, that is something we've considered, and I don't want to get into full details associated with our 
our plans, but we have uh, advocated all along for using large uh, public facilities uh, as locations for mass vaccination sites. And uh, the convention center would be one of those. Although, as we speak right now, there is nothing on the books for anything in the future associated with using the convention center uh, because that would be a location that would be appropriate for a very large max mass vaccination site for the general public. And as we've noted, we're months away from being able to start vaccinating the general public. Thanks. All right, Steve, did you have any other questions? I guess not. Uh, no, uh, thanks, Mark. Okay, and our final question goes to Mike Baggerman from WBN. Michael, you have any more questions? Uh, yeah, you had mentioned in your presentation earlier that the county's vaccination clinic, all those doses came from Roswell Park. Could you just elaborate how the county obtained it? What were the circumstances that led to it? Was it overstock, for example? Uh, no, well, I wouldn't say overstock, uh, but there was a responsibility for all the hospitals to do health professionals in our region. And we just had the capability of doing more quicker than what uh, Roswell, or for that matter, we actually helped out Kaleida Health last week as well by vaccinating staff and others in the healthcare field. We didn't have a separate pod though, that was at a Kaleida facility. We're willing to do that with all of our partners in the healthcare field. Uh, we just have to get approval from New York State to do it. So while we were doing this site with Kaleida last week, it really was on Kaleida's facility. Uh, we were able to get authorization to transfer uh, doses that were on in stock at Roswell Park so that we could immediately use them. We don't want them sitting there. Roswell Park doesn't want them sitting there. ECMC, Kaleida, Catholic Health, they don't want doses that are they're received sitting there. And the governor doesn't want them sitting there either. So we did what we thought was appropriate, advocate to create a point of distribution clinic, and uh, we got approval for that, and it's going really well. Uh, the uh, pictures that you saw here with regards to this point of distribution clinic were actually taken, uh, let's see, it's 323 right now. These were taken at around 1230 today. Uh, so our clinics are going well, our clinic I should say, there's only one, and we hope to have more of them in the future. But we cannot do it without state approval. The state controls the vaccines and where they go. If they go to one place and they're to go to somewhere else, you have to get approval from the state uh, to do it. We are hopeful that the state will allow our regional vaccination hub the power to make those determinations going forward. So if you have individuals like Dr. Michael Kane from the medical school and Mark Sullivan from Catholic Health and Tom Quattrochi from ECMC and the Lieutenant Governor and myself and others saying, here's where the vaccine should go in our region, that's the power we want from New York State. Uh, we don't want to have to go back to New York State every time to have the Department of Health say, okay, now you can use those doses elsewhere. They've created the vaccination hubs. We need the vaccination hubs to be able to make the determination for our region. Uh, we can do it. We're proving today that we can mass vaccinate a lot of individuals in a short period of time. We'll do it again tomorrow. And I hope New York State gives us those 7,500 doses that are promised so that we can do more later this week and get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. Because remember, the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine each require two doses. Before we can get out of phase 1A, we've got to vaccinate everybody in phase 1A. And before we can finally get to the general public, we have to get through phase 1A, phase 1B, phase 1C, which I believe exists, phase two. It's gonna be a long process. And I'm hopeful that New York State will give us the power to make these determinations so that we can move as quickly as possible to ensure that people are vaccinated. And the other thing we don't want, we don't want doses wasted. So this is a, a Moderna COVID-19 vaccine uh, vial that holds 10 doses. Our staff is telling us, like you've heard from elsewhere, they're actually getting 11 doses. It's a half a milliliter per dose. And even though it says it's 10 doses, they've been told they could actually get 11 doses. So we're getting one extra dose in every vial. That's good. But we don't want these sitting there. We don't want them wasted. And we just want to vaccinate as many people as possible. So with that, I want to thank our members of the media for their questions. I want to certainly on behalf of my team, thank each and every one of you for the good work that we've been able to do these most recent weeks to, to keep our, our COVID numbers down. We have seen a little spike lately in cases, 
Uh, and unfortunately, we've seen a lot of deaths recently. We need to continue that trend. It's going to be months and months until the full general public is vaccinated, perhaps a year. And that's why we need to continue wearing our masks, avoid the major social gatherings that are causing uh, the spread of COVID-19. Uh, and just know that the professionals in the Erie County Health Department, the Erie County Department of uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Services and all our other departments are working hard to provide services to you and to protect the general public. We will do that all the way through this crisis. And as the doctor noted, we will be doing the other things we need to too, such as addressing issues with uh, those who have a substance abuse disorder or issues associated with homelessness or issues associated with abuse of seniors. That's what we do in Erie County government. We do the work that businesses can't do because there's no profit to be made in it. We're out there working hard and we're gonna to continue to work hard on behalf of the people of Erie County to ensure that we are all protected as quickly as possible. Until then, wear your mask, avoid the social gatherings that unfortunately have plagued us with new cases, be safe and well, and I wanna thank you all for the good work you've done. Thank you to Kendra Schmidt, one of the hardest working individuals in Erie County. She's got the best arms I think out there from all that she's done these last uh, year. Thank Dr. Burstein and her staff for their great work. And on behalf of the people of Erie County, be safe and well all. Thank you.